Hello residents of Maple Town. Today we are in Paris and we are thieves and beggars in the Court of Miracles vying to be miracles. the penniless king in this worker placement game. So let's get to the table and check out the Court of Miracles. All right, here's the setup for the Court of Miracles. I really like that phrase, penniless king. You like that? I do. All right. And let's see who can be the penniless king. All right. You're going to be placing your rogue tokens onto these spots and taking the actions, kind of like basic worker placement. But it's also you're going to be doing um, a little bit of area control. Uh, each of these tokens are going to be hidden. So on the on the the top side is going to have your token, and on the bottom side you're going to have these. Uh, make sure I rec I'm recording over here. Um, you're going to have these different symbols on there. So that is the right hand, which is a value of two. This one is your uh, what did I say he was called? Henchman, I believe. Your henchman. That's right. He's going to be worth one. Then you've got your beggar token. We've got two henchmen, a right hand, and then a beggar token. Um, beggar token is worth zero in the as far as the area control goes. But if you lose the area control, you're going to gain one coin from the player who wins. Boom. And we'll explain that as we go. Now, the object of the game is to get your renowned tokens out onto the board into the different locations in the renowned area um, or into these different neighborhoods. First player to get their renowned tokens out on the board is going to be the winner. The other way the game can end is if the penniless king, he's going to be moving around the board, makes it all the way up here to, I think this is Notre Dame, maybe? Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All the way to the well. There we go. Easy there. All the way to the court, wherever that is. Um, all the way to the end, then that's going to signal the end of the game, and whoever has the most ro renowned tokens is going to win. I'm just, you seemed a little flustered. I'm a little flustered? All right. right. He's flustered because he knows that I dominate him in this game. <laughs> all right, again. Never won once. When you're placing these, you can't see the once. bottom. So John doesn't know what the value is that I'm placing. There's a little, little trickery. The other part is we each start off with a plot card. Those are going to give us bonuses throughout the game. We should probably look at those, right? Oh, um, okay, mine's, mine's good. And the win you place your renowned tokens. I don't know if you totally specified it. So after three tokens or rogues are out, then you do the standoff. The highest That's value right. gets to place their renown here. But it could be triggered again, so you could have the lead and have one of your renowns that could actually come back to your board. That's right. That's All exactly right. right, John. All right, so I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to place here, which is going to, you're going to take the action of the place first, uh, which is going to give me a plot card. Dun, dun, dun. Then I will take the action in the neighborhood. You can take the action in the neighborhood. You don't have to, but why would I not take two coins? Couple coins? Yeah, I need these coins. No problemo. And that is going to be the end of my turn. If we would trigger a standoff, that would happen. But it's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go here, which gets me a card and gets me a card. Two cards. All right, I guess so I should probably let me get those. My... Let me get those plot cards. These are pretty important in the game. Would you say so, Dean? I think so. I think they definitely are. Um, all right, let's see. I am going to... Uh, I'm, I might just go ahead and get some other coins. I'd like to be able to put up put something up here in the renowned court, um, and to be able to do that, I need to put coins up there. Uh, getting plot cards wouldn't be terrible either, but I think I'm just gonna. I like the plot cards that I have. I'm just not ready to use them yet. So I'm gonna place uh, this here to give me one coin, two, three coins, giving me six coins now. Does that make you nervous? It does not, because okay. I'm going to go. First, I'm actually going to play this card. Oh, not that one. <laughs> I know what it is now. Give me Dang it. Here. Yeah. Take three coins, and then Dino's going to get one coin. Oh, sweet. That's Sorry actually that. exactly what I needed. Sorry, I thought it might be. But um, then, then yeah. I'm going to take this and place it here, which gets me two coins. Then I'm going to do the action, which means I move a rogue token. So, which one... I don't know. Is what there? Um, I think I'm going to move this one, and I'm going to move it here so you can't go grab that coin. Or do I want to tempt you to grab the coin and then me? No, let's just let's just let's go. All right, and ooh, now that's really tempting for me to go to that spot, um, and then I'll be able to move you to a different location as well. Um, ooh, this is this is a little tricky now. This changes the idea of what I was going to do with my cards here. So I'm going to keep holding on to these cards. And I think what I'll do 
Ooh. Yeah, I need to go, hmm. Ah. <laughs> That's a lot of interesting decisions. Um, oh my gosh. That being said, I do yeah, I do think I will I will go here. So I'm gonna go here, take the action of the spot, which is going to give me one movement for the penniless king. Um, he'll trigger standoffs as he gets to these different locations. No matter to, how many are there. Right, right. Yeah, that's correct. So this can be a really it seems we won't play through a whole game. I'm gonna but move. It might seem like it's unimportant, but it's hugely important, especially towards the end of the game. I think I'm gonna move John over here. Um, okay. Now I could also move my player to a location, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because I kind of want this this standoff to trigger right now because I think I've got John. I All right, I do. All right, so then the standoff happens. We've taken both the actions there. I've only got a one. Okay, yeah, and so these will come off, and I've got a two and which a one did I put one. over there? You put the two over there. The two over there. Yeah. Now, I have control of this neighborhood. So from now on, anytime someone takes an action here, uh, I'll gain a coin. So if you have a, a renown in any of those uh, neighborhoods, when someone takes an action, you get a coin, which is helpful. Mm -hmm. And that is now your turn. Okay. You all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just trying to think of what I want to do. Um... Sorry. Uh, -da -da -bum -bum. Um, okay. I think, I think I'm going to go here. Okay. Take a coin. Um, I'm going to spend seven coins. I'm going to go big right now. Okay. Just to okay. get this off my page. Uh, page thing. So I'm only able to do this one time. I'm going to place my token here and I'm going to draw two more because these plot cards can be pretty, pretty important. They definitely can. Um, all right. I think what I'll do is what I would like to do. I've got a lot of coins over here, just like John does. And so part of me would like to be able to do the exact same thing he did, but instead I'm going to play a plot card, um, which is going to move an opponent's um, let me slide that down. Move an opponent's rogue token to another spot or even to another neighborhood. Now, I don't really know which one's better, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it. This is tricky now. Um, not too tricky. I think I'm going to move this over here. Here. Um, now, John's not going to get the benefit of that, but I'm going to go ahead and, oops, sorry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I'll move this over here in case you didn't see it because the card was on there. And then I will take my action, which will be to place this here, give me a plot card, additional two coins, which I've got a lot of coins now. I need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then the standoff will happen here. I have a total of three there. John has one, which is going to give me another renowned token out here. Now what... If this was a tie, I don't know if we mentioned this, but whoever's closest to this X spot on here is going to be the tiebreaker. Um, but I was at no risk of doing that, and I am feeling pretty good. You want to do orange components? Yeah, let's let's talk about it. So again, you keep playing through that till you get all your renowned tokens out there. Um, the only other spot that we didn't mention, um, you start off with these rogue tokens. Um, did you, you did not do this right? We just moved you over mm, there. That's correct. So if you take that spot over there, what you do is you you have to have one of your rogue tokens off the side, and then you're just going to draw one of the tokens out of the bag and they do lots of different things. I'm not going to go through everything that they do. Some of them are just worth, you know, different values. Some of them are going to give you coins based on whether or not if you lose or maybe get a plot card if you lose. Um, so there's lots of different things that can happen yeah. from that. But yes, art and components, go ahead. Okay, so I really like the art on the board in particular, don't you? I think it looks vibrant. It's really well done. Uh, it's very, I think it's pretty clean iconography. I like how it has the, the blank the plain colors behind this, so they stand out. So it looks, and they have the same colors, kind of go into the same neighborhood. They're four distinct, five, excuse me, distinct colors. I really, really like the art here, and I quite enjoy them on the cards as well. Um, the box yeah. is a little dark. Like, it's not as my, it's not, maybe not my favorite. I forgot yeah, to hold, the, there, hold the box up during the... We'll have to, we'll have to throw that up and post, I guess. Oh, yeah. It is over here. Can we go get it? No, yeah, okay. go get it. All right. Uh, stuff in the box here. Here we go. There we go. There's a box. So, yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting for how nice and vibrant this is, how kind of dark this is. 
That's why I didn't love this as much. It's not a bad. It's not a bad box. I mentioned but. this in the podcast. It kind of gives me vibes of like Vincent Dutre style art. Um, in in a way, I think it looks. I think it looks really good. You just wanted to throw out your artistic. I just wanted to look good. <laughs> just by mentioning someone's name? You did. I don't know him. I was just throwing that out there. Andy Warhol. Um, Bob. I, I think this has a Bob Ross flair. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, these tokens, the robe tokens, I think are fantastic. These little wooden tokens. Um, plastic tokens. John thinks they're plastic. <laughs> they're obviously wooden. They have wood grain in them. So I think they are wooden. Um, yeah. Anyway, I like those. I like the robe tokens. Uh, I, I really enjoy, or not the robe tokens, the... Uh, Ren Allen tokens, I think, is is cool. Um, everything is just it's well that? done. Can you hear that, Maple Town? Everything is very clear cut, like John said. Doesn't, well. that, doesn't that sound like plastic? Oh my gosh! All right, so art components, I am happy with. I am to accept, accept how the board has this nice cut, but you see this right here. I don't know yeah. if you can see Maple Town, but because it has this custom cut board, they these little towers can get messed up. I think that they came out of the box messed up for you. Maybe I don't know honestly. I think getting jarred around in the box is what really hurts that. That is a that's a pretty big negative. I think that's well, that's a frustrating thing. But one thing that we get, you do at Meeple Town is Dean. When we get games, we shake them around like this and we toss them around and we sit on them for a while, at least thirty minutes, and then we got to test these components out to make yeah. sure that they're they're good. That's it. No, so that's we definitely that, don't do that. But they came out. What, do you whatever. Whatever. That box top. Is that pretty solid? Uh, nope. Um. Yeah, that that's a big deal. It it didn't it didn't have to be that way if it wasn't custom cut, but it does look cool. It looks I great, guess. but yeah. it does, that's the only complaint. Okay, gameplay. But is the game any fun? Yes, the game is fun. I'll say that. Uh, it's pretty simple gameplay. You know, you, we can teach this game in no time at all. You just sure. basic worker placement. You're going to take the action of the spot in the neighborhood, which is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. um, because. Not only do you have to think about which neighborhood that you want to go to, but also which spot is available, not only for the action you take, but also for the uh, for the area control aspect of that, which yeah. I think is pretty fascinating. Um, the plot cards are huge in this game, right? Which is why I was like getting all kinds of yeah. plot cards. Like yeah. he, he has the lead now, but I do have more plot cards. We'll see if it, that would have. I was going to factored win. in. I was there. It was mm -hmm. over. The game was over. I mean, I can flip those. You can't flip them. <clears throat> So who knows? That's true. But you um, have enough coins to. <laughs> I do have a lot of coins, and only have one coin. So I do think you have the lead in this game right now. There is a lot to think about, though, because of that. Like, and and there is some randomness to that because of the plot cards. But you have to think. Like, you're right. I do have these, but they're not as solidified renowned token spots as these are. You can also take get these coins off the board. every time. And those are two good ones to control because those are gone. That one is too. Yeah. That one is too. They all are actually. Yeah, but it does take a little while, like you said. And, really and what I could have done, you know, you've got this eight spot that costs eight coins to be able to do this, and it moves up the penniless king up three spots, which is this can be important too. But um, or I could have just held off and been able to get two renowned yeah. tokens out here, but the bonus would have been less. And so there's a lot of for I a simple game. There's a lot of interesting decisions like that. I would have taken this if I could have gotten to that yeah, spot uh -huh. and then gone, gone ahead and won that because no one had done that yet, and I probably would get a decent amount of coins. But yeah. I was fine with the seven. But yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I'm with you, Dean. I mean, it's super simple. I mean, you're taking this, you're placing it down, you're getting whatever it says, you're getting the action in the neighborhood, and then you're just kind of playing a little um, area majority game and mm -hmm. seeing who can, you know, and when to go. And like maybe certain spots are more important earlier in the game. I, I mean, I guess, I don't know. They're all kind of important though, really. Yeah, and now we're playing a two-player game, but as with most area control games, I think having more players definitely adds to... Um, kind of the um, not craziness, but like the the betterness of the area control. I think it it works better with more players. The betterness. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but it still works well with two players. I think. Don't you? Yeah, I, I think fine. this works. I think this. Works it's more really of a well. chess match with two yeah. players. I feel like so. Yeah. But it does play up to five, um, and I think it's it's you know better at a little bit higher player count because it's such a quick game yeah. too. So I'll, I just want to mention one more thing is that the the, the plot cards are cool. Plot cards. Carts? Did I say carts? You said cards. Did I say... Never mind. I better not say that. Okay. They're cool, but they can also be really swingy in the game. They can be really, really powerful. I mean, I could have... Tar I, I could remove all the rogue tokens from a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I was going to be able to draw a new rogue token and go ahead and... Without even taking an action, which it would be like that. So I could have gone here and gotten two new rogue tokens, which is probably what I was, I was thinking about doing that. To really start to build my bag. Or my... It's not a bag. But you draw from a bag. Build my rogues up. Um, 
Yeah, there's there's you can take cards really... from the stack. There's when certain conditions are met, sometimes so certain things will trigger. I, guess, I feel like at cards. the end of the game, it can feel potentially a little lucky because of those cards. I still like the cards, but like if you're drawing the right card at the right time, it could make a big move. Or if you're just not getting the cards you need. Now, most of them are going to give you some type of benefit, but I mean, like for example, this one says remove one of your uh, renown tokens from a place and get five coins. Now that's great early in the game, late game. Mm -hmm. That can be really tough if you're trying to finish off getting that and that could just be a bad draw. You know, or you it do. could be good too if you know that you're going to lose a spot. If you, if you, you know, you have tokens sure. here that aren't yours and you already control this. They're spot. all fine cards. You're going to lose it, then you would want to play that to gain those coins. Situationally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I really, I've really enjoyed this game because it's... The Final thoughts? Yeah, I'm moving right into that. So the simplicity of the gameplay, um, but there's still a lot of really interesting decisions to make um, about so many things, about the cards that could be played, about the cards that you have, about the locations that you're playing in, about trying to gain control, about the Penniless King. All of those things are going through your mind with each each action that you take, which I think yeah. is really interesting um, for such a, again, quick, simple game. You know, if I got two renowned tokens out, you can get renowned tokens out pretty fast. You saw just in a couple rounds, we got yeah. some out there. So, and the plot cards really speed that up too. So, I really enjoy my plays of this one. I give this one an eight. It's one that I think wow. is a, I think this is a really fun game. It's one that I'm not going to turn. Uh, I'm not going to turn it down. If you say, hey, let's play Court of Miracles, I'll play it because it's, again, so quick and so fun and interesting. Player interactions through the roof, and I love that. Yeah, I, I think there's some interesting, just again, pieces to this game, the simplicity of it. Um, the plot cards can be good, but again, they're, they can be a little bit swingy. Um, you have also no idea what your opponent has. So if you want a game where you can have a little bit better idea, like I can know... I have a good idea of what his rogues are. At least early in the game, I know what he can place out Yes. Uh -huh. Even after he gets them from his bag, after he shows it, I know what he has. Those, I have no dead gum idea what they are. So for some people, they might love that because yeah. it's a little bit more surprise, surprise attack uh, with a lot of different cards. Some people may not like that. They may like more of a chessy style. I know what my opponent has. Now I'm going to see what he's going to do or she's going to do, and then I'll move back and forth. Um, for some reason, I'm somewhere in the middle on those kind of things. Um I think the game overall is fun. I like this game, um, but it doesn't, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's just like, probably a lot of it has to do with just my style. It doesn't totally blow my mind. I think it is going to, that a lot of people are going to like it a whole lot though. And so I'm going to give this seven out of 10, mm -hmm. which means I'm usually willing to play this game. Like someone wants to play it. I'll say, sure, it's, it's a fun game, but it's probably not from my personal style, something I'm going to recommend often. Like, hey, let's go play Court of Miracles. There's also some other games. I mean, we just did a review and I've said this on Blitzkrieg. And I like Blitzkrieg quite a bit more than this. Um, I, I'm not going to go into why, and it has some similar feels. But I still, I still enjoy this game. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's a good game. And this game is only, it's less than thirty dollars. So if you're on the fence about it, I mean, it's it doesn't cost much to take a flyer on it and give it a try. Um, I like it. Don't love it. Solid game, though. Yeah, yeah. And if you like those those aspects, if you like quicker games, if you like uh, worker placement, if you like, you know, plot cards, you know, event type cards that, that come out um, and area control, I think this is going to be one that you're going to you're gonna really enjoy. So that's yeah. a seven from John. That's an eight from me. Tell people how they can get in touch with us. All right. If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to it. You can go to MeepleTownGames.com to check out all our stuff. You can get a little MeepleTown swag. That's not the swag symbol. Tom Haverford and uh, John Ralphio. I got you, but it's not what that means. They know what I mean. At Meepletown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, Guild number 3407, at BoardGameGeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.